Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Got a few things I wanted to go over this morning, and um, I've got some really, uh, an article, I, every once in a while I see an article that just really pounds what I've been saying for a while, and this one you're going to like. Um, but first, I wanted to talk about what was accomplished yesterday. Now, I've said it um a lot and I and many people in in the XRP community know it by now but as a as an XRP community we're extremely effective at bringing things to light when they're important and I'll say again like I've said before um, that as we do these kind of things it's important that we that we are we do them in a respectful way we're not trying to make enemies or anything like that we're just trying to let truth rise to the top and make sure that that everything everyone is doing right by XRP and by Ripple. And so yesterday, I think this kind of um, this started with um, XRP Crypto Wolf, which he, he started the whole thing. So when the, when the history books are written on this, I want to make sure he gets uh, full credit on that. I don't have him pulled up right now, but I showed him to you yesterday. This guy, now think about this for a minute. This is one person who, who began this conversation. Uh, I'm sure that they will end up giving credit to someone else, but they shouldn't. It's XRP, Crypto Wolf. What I've seen over and over is that people that don't deserve the credit, that didn't get uh, things started, end up getting credit. And so I hope that XRP, Crypto Wolf, gets the credit he deserves on this because he started this whole thing. Um, so moving along. Um, this is, um, if you don't follow Javi Gonzalez, it's at XRP underscore Spain underscore army. He is a major contributor in the XRP community. So go follow him. Well, he, he sent, he sent me this this morning and this is a, uh, he's having the dialogue that all of us have been kind of talking about, which is we want coin market cap to get the market, the, the market cap of, uh, XRP right. I think it's ironic that their name is coinmarketcap.com, but they don't have the right market cap for XRP. And so um, here he, um, they were having a dialogue, and he, and they say, and by the same way of working as Coin Market Cap, Coin Pabriga, Live Coin Watch works the same way. At Forbes Crypto, take a look at these manipulation over platforms and expose them, please. Yahoo Finance is the only one showing the real data. And then uh, this was a, uh, he's, uh, I guess he's retweeting an, an XRP Yoda tweet, which I'll pull up. But I want to make a point here. Um, this was, and, and I want to give a shout out to Live Coin Watch. Now, the whole time I have been, that I've, when I was growing up, all you ever heard with regard to business was that the customer is always right. Well, I want to give Live Coin Watch some credit here because look at their response, and then I'm going to show you Coin Market Cap's response to all of this. Live Coin Market, uh, Live Coin Watch says, "Javi, we're wor working on adding total market cap and circulating market cap as a separate track trackable stats. Started on it immediately after we heard from you all on social media. In other words, we listen to the customer, and so we want to do the right thing." Now let's look at CoinMarketCap's response to XRP Yoda. Um, it's more like a school teacher to a student. Um, we understand that our method of calculating the market cap is not aligned with your idea of what the market cap should be. However, if you are wanting to see the market cap by XRP's total supply, we have always offered this. In other words, they give you some link that's way in the background. They're not going to give you the main link to show the, the, what the truth of the market cap is. They don't want to put that on the homepage. Might get a little too close for comfort to Bitcoin, won't it? Um, and so anyway, let's, uh, any of you that don't know about Live Coin Watch, you should go over there and check their website out because the, uh, 
you know, if, if they're listening to their customers, ultimately coin market cap is going to do this to their detriment because just because you've been on top does not mean you'll always be on top. Ask MySpace how that works out if you if you stop uh, doing stop changing based on what customers are saying and based on what the demand is and have a, a product that's not as good you will end up losing and so you should listen to your customers that's my final say on that um, moving along though I wanted to show this Goldman Sachs digital asset market head current bear run in the crypto market is healthy okay now remember last week this is what we were seeing I like to always show you all this. Jamie Dimon and Warren Buffett have the last laugh on Bitcoin. And so I also want to give a shout out to the guy that wrote this, Lionel Laurent. Now I want you today as an exercise, go look at Bloomberg's crypto website. They do not, for the last 24 hours, crypto market has been booming and, and going crazy. These guys, do, I could not find one positive article on their entire website, but they wrote this last week. And so give Lionel Laurent a shout out and remind him, he, his Twitter is on here. Um, ask him about how he's enjoying the market this week because apparently Warren and Jamie uh, did not have the last laugh because Bitcoin has been spiking over the last, and between now and next year, um, they will be crying if they had the last laugh last week. Um, that's my prediction. So back to this though, Goldman Sachs, um, digital asset market head current bear run in the crypto market is healthy um, one of the things they asked me that I think he's talking about is cut one of the things they asked me is can you hold our coins he, Goldman Sachs is talking about their customers and more or less this entire article is Goldman Sachs talking about two things how the pullback is a healthy thing which is true but they're also talking about how they still cannot custody digital assets and this this is the core of the problem and this once this is solved and you better believe they're trying to solve it I've, heard, I've read that they're working with BACT to solve this issue but anyway they're gonna solve it and what I'm about to read to you is gonna blow your mind about what these people are really thinking and what they're saying and talking about and doing behind the scenes because it falls in direct line with everything I've ever told you. And it, and it I read this and I, it was like ding, 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 ding. Um, but anyway, moving along, I wanted to uh, read, custody is the foundational piece that is absolutely necessary. Custody is part of an overall integrated system where different parts need to work well with each other and safely with each other. And you have to be able to trust all the different parts of the chain from buying something to transferring it is storing it for the long term. So I say to you people, uh, to everyone listening, if you read anything in this article, read this and read it loud. These guys, as soon as they solve this custody thing, I think it's already solved, but they haven't rolled it out yet. Once this thing is solved and these guys are ready and in a position to make money, I've said it all along, it's all the gates will be knocked down and you will see the greatest flood of assets into an, a new asset class that you've ever seen probably in the history of the world we've got a hundred uh, I think it was 130 or so billion 130 140 billion dollars as of this morning which had changed I think to the tune of 20 or so billion in a period of 24 hours well you think that's an up market Wait till these guys are right. Wait till Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and all the boys have their custody custody solutions and trading desks and all this set up. You haven't even seen money yet. Finally, I want you I want to show you the article that got me excited this morning. Okay, now this is from the Abacus Journal. Now owner, I always say this. Um, the Abacus Journal, there's been a lot of people that say, oh, well, they put articles that have no source. Well, Abacus Journal, every time I read one of their articles, they have they, they are quoting, and I think this is the secret to their success, they are quoting their sources, and these are quotes that are very in-depth and very specific. And for that reason, I will give you the I always give you the caveat, and I always say these are 
these these sources are unnamed, but they're at least telling you where they're from. And like I've said before, one of the greatest stories in the history of the world was Watergate, and those were anonymous sources as well. And so I don't think that there's anything wrong with covering it as long as you um, give the caveat. But these are so specific that I feel compelled to go over it. This is, for, this is their tweet. Morgan Stanley, and, and there, there's some language in here. I'm going to try to dance around the language. Morgan Stanley, Trader Talk. We talk about crypto every day around here. Now, if you remember, I may, some of you may not know, I was a financial advisor at Morgan Stanley back in the day. I'm not a financial advisor now, but I was with Morgan Stanley. It, I was with Morgan Stanley at the time that they were changing their name from Dean Wet. They, I think they had merged with Dean Witter. Their, the name was being changed from Dean. It, it was Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, and then they were taking the Dean Witter off and just making it Morgan Stanley. And so um, this is very interesting to me. We talk about crypto every day around here. You can bet we will trade the sh out of it in 2019. And now this is the actual article. And I want to read you some of the quotes. These guys went and they talked to actually, I think it was three traders at Morgan Stanley. And I want you to hear this is more, much more in line with what you and I, now th this might, this, this, and this is one thing that I may have never really touched on you, um, on with you, um, about crypto. And this is the way it's been from the time I got in. And, and it's, uh, it, it, when you get into crypto and you do that first movement of money and you do that first buy of, you know, I, I initially bought Bitcoin and then went down further down the rabbit hole. But when you make that buy and then you go and you go onto these platforms and you send Bitcoin here. And, and um, I remember when I first started trading, I had a friend that I got into it with me and he would front me. Bitcoin so that I could go ahead and buy and then I would pay him back a few days later and he would send it to me and at that time this was in 2013 I was blown away that this Bitcoin that he had could be sent to me because I was thinking in terms of what our banking system is like was like at that time or, and is like today and I was blown away and that's it, it became and crypto literally come, in a way becomes a, a bit of an addiction because you your gut is screaming to you what you have just found and that's the reason you're here that's the reason I'm here that's the reason we all get it is because once you do it and I would bet I would bet money that Warren Buffett who has been anti bitcoin I would bet you money Warren Buffett has never sat down and gone through the process of buying Bitcoin and then sending it and then interacting, sending it, whether it's to an exchange or, or back and then uh, going and, and, um, and then going through the process of looking at all the other digital assets and what these projects are doing. It's almost like an addiction. I want to tell you that and, and it's very emotional and we all um, are emotional and, and part of the reason we're emotionally so emotionally involved in this is because it makes sense and it, our gut is screaming to us the kind of sense this made and it has been since we got into it and we're right and I wanted to tell you that before I read you these quotes from Morgan Stanley and see if that syncs with what they're saying here because oh does it first they start out in this article they say a brief description of a Morgan Stanley trade desk dude early 30s unmarried, adrenaline addicted, and in constant search for volatility to produce market bearing performance and year end bonuses. Good. Got that out of the way. Now here's the quotes. These are from traders at Morgan Stanley. Just take the idea that these things trade 24 hours a day and seven days a week. That alone would create renewed profitability on trading desks everywhere. And of course, the volatility would make bank execs, I'll say very excited, they used a sexual term there. Um, that is why bean, count, bean counters, lawyers here are working overtime trying to quantify risks and policies to get us on at a minimum Bitcoin and eventually Ethereum, the bottom line on cryptos. 
We talk about them every day, and the plan is to trade the S out of them next year. Nearly all of us have built in those profits into our projected earnings next year. They go on, give me all the cryptos and watch what I could do for this place. This is a trader at Morgan Stanley. Give me all the cryptos and watch what I could do for this place. Clients won't stop asking me about them. I've not seen anything like this in my career. I have heard from old heads what it was like in 98 and 99 with the dot-com bubble. But even those guys say this is bigger and more emotionally driven. We make a S-ton if we had access, institutionally speaking. And that's just the beginning, people. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that Ripple XRP and crypto is bigger than .com. This is going to be massive. Thanks for listening.